welcome back to the fish room. So I have actually made a little measuring box so that I can uh, measure the fish without having to take them out of the tanks. Um, so today we're going to look at how big some of these guys are and I'm also going to take you around for all of the newbies and show you how they're doing. So our little baby bristle nose that seem to be doing really well. Um, I haven't actually seen any uh, deceased ones so far, so that's um, that's pretty good going because they can be quite fragile at this age. Um, but no, their egg sacs are completely absorbed and there's a good sort of 20 or so. They have been mostly hanging out on the back glass uh, the last couple of days, so I have um, done a couple of water changes um, and they have started coming down onto the bottom today, uh, which I think is because it's a bit cleaner in here for them, uh, which is a little bit better. So yeah, they're, um, they're, they're pretty small compared to my finger. Um, they're pretty diddy, but um, they are doing pretty well. And the stair is next door, so I've just put some food around for everybody. And these L262 are doing really, really well. Um, I've said before, I absolutely love these. Um, but they are, when they don't see me moving around outside the tank, they are actually eating really well um, and sort of doing everything that they should. So that's really nice. And they've got those sort of um, squinty looking eyes like the uh, Queen Arabesques have. They almost look like they've got sort of sleepy eyelids even though they don't have eyelids. Very, very nice looking fish, these. Now, I'm working on taming up these leopard frogs. They are a little bit like the um, Vitatas. Um, so, they're just a little bit shy at the moment. They're a little bit unsure about the food, but they're 100% eating the rapashi and the flakes. Um, I know they are just by the sort of waste and things that um, I can see in the corner of my eye when they're eating it. Um, they just don't want to be filmed um, or really bothered too much. Like this one over here, look, this one's eating right now. And because it's got its back to us. And now it stopped again. Probably because it felt my hand on the tank, they can um, feel the vibrations. So yeah, they're, they're getting there, bless them. But no, most of them are sort of just down the back of this pile of rocks and tubes. Um, you can see a couple of them there, look. But no, they're, um, they're still just getting used to life in a tank at the moment. They're used to danger at every corner and every movement being some sort of predatory fish or something that's uh, going to harm them. So it takes them a little while to get comfortable and realise that there's nothing to be worried about. And we got these lovely bumblebee striped tanky tigers up at the top here. In true vernacular style, they're um, making a right old mess where they're eating the wood and it's coming out the other end. Um, but these seem to be holding on to their lovely contrasting stripes. Um, and they, they've settled in really well. Sorry, that one's just kicked up a load of muck. Love that. Um, but no, they've settled in really well. They're eating anything I offer them. Um, so no worries about these. They just need to gain a little bit of weight and um, sort of pinch up a little bit. Sort of get a little bit more broad in the body, a little bit stockier like the L002s are. This is a pretty typical size for an L002. Uh, they're pretty spicy, they don't really like being caught. And this is a little clown pleco. Uh, it's probably about three quarters of the size they'll get in terms of the necklace. Um, so most of them get a similar sort of size, very manageable but quite messy. Um, the largest ones are going to be things like flash pecos and mustard spots, they get quite large. And actually, while I'm up here, amazingly enough, um, a couple of the snowballs have come out for dinner. Um, so these are the L201 snowballs, not the 47 ones, which are the little ones. Um, so these often get mixed up with Hypancestrus inspector, but these are just Hypancestrus sp. Um, and yeah, they're, they're very, very shy. They're a very secretive, like, private fish. I would probably describe them as, like, private and secretive. Um, they kind of give me the illusion that they're sort of always up to no good and just, like, hiding and... Um, like naughty children, you, you, you catch them doing something, eating something, having a little convention in the corner and then they all scurry. Um, but they are fun in their own right, it's just don't expect to see them too much, bless them. Um, but they're absolutely stunning and it's a real treat when they do come out and you've got them comfortable. And 
Snowballs get between 8 and 10 centimetres long, so very manageable. And my beautiful Angelica, still uh, no news on the egg front. Same with the L333s. Um, I have been doing some cooler water changes, but it's uh, it's all just stocked again. It hasn't rained here though, and I have a feeling if I do a water change when it rains, that will um, that will kick everyone off. But it hasn't rained here in ages now. Um, and everyone was saying it was going to snow this week, and now it's pretty mild this week as well. So, but there is a very nice melon, and he is very pretty. So that's um, that's something. So this tank got a bit of a rearrange uh, yesterday because I was um, catching them out and measuring them. Um, so everything's been sort of pushed back a little bit, so the status quo in this tank has changed and they're all sort of hanging out in slightly different positions because uh, because I've changed all of their territories, but it doesn't seem to have changed how tame they are. So these are the L173B false zebras. I don't think I'm ever not going to feature these in a video to be honest because they're always out and about so they're so easy to film and they're so pretty. We've got some of the false zebras in the measuring box here. I am disinfecting it in between uses, by the way. Um, but they're about five, six centimetres at the moment, and they will eventually get around ten centimetres, which is around the same size as the Bellamonte uh, is of three, three, three. Um, and these can get a little bit bigger than this, but this is sort of different size. So I've just spooked them, but the um, the candy stripes, the L15 Picoltia vitata. They're um, doing really well now, they've bounced back, um, there's not a single one of them in here that isn't doing well now. Um, and today is the first day I've popped the light on, but they are colouring up that lovely sort of peachy orange colour that they get, uh, with a bit more sort of like red and orange through the fins. And uh, yeah, they are they are eating well. They don't really like to eat around me just yet, they're, they're still getting used to me, but um, they are definitely doing much better than they were when they arrived, when they were really, really pale looking um, and quite sluggish. Um, so yeah, they've um, they've quite right up. Uh, I, quite, I quite like this one with the sort of hook-shaped stripes and things, but um, they're, they're a little bit of adult size. Probably got about three, four centimetres to go until they're adult size. Um, so the, the pattern might sort of stretch out and change a little bit as they age. But no, these just need um, feeding up now, really. Um, the, the rest of the tank is a little bit dark, so it's a little bit difficult to see. But um, we'll check back with these in a couple of minutes and see if they'll come out for food and see if I can sneak up on them without um, spooking them into this corner. Now I did a big water change on this tank and I've just chucked loads of uh, Rapashi Soylent Green in here as well. Um, but can you spot the Asostridium dichromum? So yeah, they, they all seem to be hanging out on this fake plant that I've put in because I wanted to see if they'd change colour. Um, and yeah, there's actually quite a few of them on here but it's really difficult to spot them um, because they do really blend in. Um, with the surroundings. Oh, there's one there. So yeah, they're doing really well in here. I can tell just from the ones that are on the glass, you know, the tummies are nice and filled out. Um, the gills aren't red. Um, the, there's no sort of redness um, in the sort of thorax area and their torso, so to speak, you can call it that. Um, and they're, they're not breathing hard at all. So they seem really comfortable in here and you know when I do a head count, the, the ones I can see, we don't seem to be losing any because I can sort of recognise them roughly by their sort of shape and their size, which one's which, like that, that one there is the big green one that's always sort of like dominant in green. Um, and then yeah, so we, we've got lots of sticks and things but they actually seem to have congregated more on the thinner sticks and um, this sort of uh, fake plant nonsense that I've popped in here. Um, but yeah. We've got our little orange Venezuelan curries in here as well. 
who are mostly responsible for the mess. So yeah, they're doing really well in this tank. I'm just watching my Pinocchio whiptails uh, enjoying some crushed up flakes. Um, so these are, oh my goodness, Hemiodontich this Acupenserinus, or Acupenserinus. Um, so they're Pinocchio whiptail catfish. And whiptails are sort of split into two or three different groups. You've got the ones that are more sort of carnivorous, believe it or not. So these ones are like the slowest predatory fish in the world. Um, but what they do is they wait for like Daphnia and little bugs and things and then they'll just go around and hoover them up. So a lot of the bottom dwelling whiptails like this, even though they look like an algae eater, they're not. Um, they'll barely do anything for algae. Same with this um, Simalima here. Um, so these guys are, are more carnivorous. They're like the slowest hunters ever. And they'll, uh, they'll eat crushed flakes, frozen food, live Daphnia, all that kind of stuff. That's, that's their jam. Um, but they're very different to the red lizard whiptails, which will go up on the glass and they will eat algae and they're more sort of omnivorous. So these are two uh, females, and you can tell these are females because they don't have uh, accentuated moustaches, uh, those lip addendums. So the males, these are actually a mouth, mouth brooding species, I've bred these before. The males have got these great big sort of like moustache things on their mouths, and that's where they stick the eggs. Um, so these are two females up the front here, and then yeah, this is, um, I'm fairly certain this is a male, but he's obviously a different species. Very, very slow pace of life, these Pinocchios, they're great fun. So the super squat size are doing really well. There's a bit of sunlight on this tank, so um, it was a very clear footage. And I'm also really pleased with how these Barry Ancestors uh, Pudinis are getting on. Um, L239 blue blacks, and um, they're thriving on the, the soil of green and the flakes. In with our small army of uh, super red bristle noses here. So these guys are all doing really well. They seem to be growing at a pretty good rate. I am keeping them quite warm and feeding them quite a lot. Um, it's, it's quite messy keeping this number of hoes in a tank all together and you do have to make sure that everybody's getting enough food um, and that everybody's, you know, got enough territory and stuff. footage I really wanted to get uh, last night of the eel and the Neosilurus in the uh, in the big arowana tank. So I fed them some cyclops this morning and uh, the eel came out and did actually have a go at the cyclops. He doesn't normally, he normally just eats blood worm. So these fire reels do get very large, they can eventually get sort of three four foot long so they're, they're not really a fish for most people's tanks. Neosilurus he's about as big as he's gonna get um, so they're an an eel-tailed catfish, they call them, or a tandem. So the uh, the Neosilurus and the Giardini are both um, from similar sort of place in the world. They're both, both Australian species. And then the eel, the shark, and the clown loaches are all Indonesian species, sort of Indonesia, Sumatra, that sort of place, Borneo. Um, and then the hoplo catfish and all the other catfish are South American. So I'll, uh, I'll check back, hopefully if it rains we might start getting some eggs, um, but stay tuned for another video and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!